Hello all, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be showing you how you can build your own shellcode loader or shellcode executor. Having a shellcode loader program is very convenient as it provides flexibility on the payload that you can execute. All, if not most C2 frameworks such as Metapreter, Covenant, Cobalt Strike will provide a way to generate its payload in raw shellcode format. This means that you can pretty much execute their payload with a single shellcode loader program. As a bonus, we will also be showing you how you can automate the building of the shellcode loader program in Python. Without further ado, let's get started. If we were to break it down on what is required for a shellcode loader, it is pretty easy to understand. First, we will need a way to allocate some memory. Then, we will need a way to write the shellcode into the memory that is allocated. Next, we will need to find a way to direct the program's execution to the memory address. And voila, your shellcode should get executed. There are many techniques on how this can be achieved and the techniques are pretty much available all over the internet. Techniques such as process injection, remote process injection are the most common ones. The concept across the techniques are pretty much the same. Allocating some memory, writing to the memory and directing execution to the memory address. For a simple proof of concept purpose, let's stick with the most common one. Using virtual alloc to allocate some memory, move memory to write the shellcode into the memory allocated and using create thread with wait for single object for execution of the shellcode. Let's give it a shot. Let's generate the payload with MSF Venom first as raw bytes. We will be showing how to automate the process later on with Python, whereby we will only need the shellcode file instead. We will use Python to read the shellcode file and automatically modify the source code to include it and compile it as a program. Alright, once MSF Venom has generated the reverse shell as raw bytes, let's copy and paste the shellcode into our program. Let's compile the program and give it a shot. We will need to set up a listener on our Kali on port 8443. For this demonstration, the focus is on showcasing how we can build a shellcode loader. Windows Defender is completely turned off for this video. If you are interested in Windows Defender bypasses, do check out my other videos. I have several videos showcasing how you can bypass Windows Defender on my YouTube channel for that. Alright, after transferring the poc.exe file over to our Windows machine, let's execute it. Awesome, it worked. We have successfully demonstrated how we can execute shellcode using C++ with functions such as virtual alloc, move memory, create thread and wait for a single object. There are a ton of other ways and techniques to execute a shellcode. This is the simplest one for demonstration purposes. Let's show another example on shellcode execution method before moving on to the automation part with Python programming. Shown in this GitHub repository contains several ways of executing a shellcode. Let's give the first one a try. Cert enum system stall. If we were to look at the source code, it is pretty easy to understand. The shellcode variable, virtual alloc to allocate some memory, RT move memory to move the shellcode into the memory allocated and finally the cert enum system store api call to direct execution to the memory of the shellcode let's make another copy of our poc c++ code and give this method a try This should do it. Let's compile the poc2.c++ and transfer it over to our Windows machine. We will need to set up a listener again. Hmm, undefined reference error. Oh, if we were to look at the source code, it says that the crypt library is required. Let's add in the dash l crypt32 flag onto the compilation command and this should resolve it. Awesome. Let's transfer poc2.exe over and give it a shot on our Windows machine now. Great, it worked again. As demonstrated, there are many, many ways to execute shellcode. Feel free to try it out yourself, the different techniques and methods. Now, let's see how we can automate the process of generating the shellcode loader program with Python. It's actually pretty simple to do so. We just need the original C++ source code without the shellcode in it. And we also need the payload file that we want to execute in raw shellcode format. Let's generate the shellcode file with MSF Venom. 
we can specify the format to be raw and this should create a raw shellcode payload file. This is what you will get if you use a different C2 framework such as Covenant, Havoc or even Cobalt Strike. Now in our directory, we have the source code C++ file and the shellcode payload file that we want to execute. Now let's work on the Python script to automate the entire building process. What we will need is a Python script that will perform the following. The Python script should read the payload file in a directory as raw bytes and store it in a variable. It should also read the C++ source code file and look for the variable that contains the empty shellcode. It should then perform a string replace to replace the empty shellcode variable with the content of the raw shellcode file that we have read. Finally, it will compile the source code for us, generating the shellcode loader program in exe format. Let's do this in Python. Let's define the requirements as separate functions, a function to read the original C++ source code and also a function to read the raw shellcode payload file. This should do it. Let's give it a shot. The Python script should be able to print out the original C++ source code and also the bytes in the payload.bin file that we have generated with MSF Venom. Oh dear, the Python script sort of worked. The raw shellcode payload has to be formatted a little. Let's format it so that it will match the C++ syntax. We can do so by switching up so that backslash x is added in front of each byte instead and converting it to hex format. This should do it. Let's run the Python script again. Awesome, it worked. Now let's move on to the next step. We will need to perform some string match and replace in order to place the shellcode bytes into the empty variable that we currently have in the original C++ source code. This should do it. The Python code should be able to identify the shellcode variable and replace it with a new shellcode variable that contains our shellcode bytes. Awesome, it worked perfectly. This is great. Now let's write this new C++ source code that we have into a new file and compile it with Python. Alright, this should do it. Let's give it a shot. Awesome, it worked. We can see that by running our Python script, we can automate the building of the shellcode loader program totally. We just need to have a raw payload shellcode file in the directory along with the original MTC++ source code. You should be able to use it with other C2 frameworks as well by generating their own raw shellcode payload. Awesome, it worked. Now we can use any raw shellcode payload file and the Python script will help to automate the building of the shellcode launcher and produce the exe file for us. Let's try another raw shellcode file to demonstrate this. Let's do a raw shellcode file with a metapreter reverse shell. Let's use MSF Venom to generate the new payload.bin shellcode file. Alright, now let's set up a metapreter listener in Metasploit console. This should do it. Now let's run the Python script again. It will produce the poc.exe shellcode launcher program for us automatically. Now let's transfer it over to our Windows machine and give it a final try. Awesome, it worked again. We have successfully demonstrated how we can execute shellcode payloads and even build a Python script to automate it. All of the references used can be found in the video's description, so be sure to check them out. I have recently created a free phishing course available on Udemy. This phishing course is completely free and it is only about 30 minutes long. Several phishing techniques and popular tools such as GoFish is demonstrated in the course. The link to the free course will be available in the video's description. That is all to this video. I hope you all have found the video to be interesting and useful. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye!